Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Austin, and I'm back with another tutorial. Oh, Lord. Austin. Made another one. Let's go. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to have flow and after effects like the video you see on screen now. Alright, so if you don't already know, flow is basically time remapping and graphs and after effects where you can sync the clip to the beat and you can really enhance your edit and just make it look a lot better and professional. So, yeah, I don't want to be wasting any of your guys' time, so let's get straight into it. Alright, to start off, create a new composition and make sure you have your frame rate at 24 FPS because if you're using 60 FPS in 2021, like what are you doing? You must be a highlights editor or something. And also make sure you have your aspect ratio at 16 by 9 because duh. And then once you're in your composition, you're just going to drag in your song and your clip. And then you're going to start marking up all the beats to your song. You can double click L to see the wavelengths. So it really helps you like find the beats and stuff in the song. I'm going to be using a remedy for a broken heart by X because I mean it is a banger song. To place a marker, there are two ways to do it. If you have a number pattern on your keyboard, you can press the asterisk key and then you can, and then you can get a marker on the clip like this. Or you could simply just select the marker right here and drag it onto the timeline wherever you like. Alright, so I'm just going to go through and mark all the beats in the song. And yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so I have a couple beats marked up in the song. And now what you want to do is go to the beat where you want the kill to happen. And so I'm just going to go to that beat. And I'm going to look for the first frame where a shot appears on the gun, which would be this frame. Because one frame before, there's nothing there. And I'm going to make sure that frame is lined up with the beat that I want the kill to happen on. And now once that's lined up, I'm simply going to go to the beat where I want my clip to start. And I'm just going to trim it there. Alright, so now let's get to the juicy part. What you're going to want to press on your keyboard is Control alt t to get time remapping open. Or you could simply just right click the clip. And then go to time and enable time remapping. Either works. Yeah, 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 nobody cares, Austin, but you know what people do care about? Good content. You know who makes good content? Me. If you're watching this far into the video, you probably are enjoying or you're learning something. It does not matter. Still, consider liking and subscribing. It would really help this video do better than the algorithm. And it really just helps my channel. And if you do enjoy this video, you're probably going to like some of my other videos. I do a lot of edits on my channel. So you can check this out. But yeah, uh, back to the video. And now I'm going to want to go to the beat where the kill happens. And I'm going to go one frame before that. Once I'm there, I'm going to press this diamond to keyframe, and then I'm going to go two frames to the right, so it should be one frame after the beat where I want the kill to happen. And then I'm going to take this slider, I'm going to drag it up so that the time moves forward until the hotbar on the clip disappears, which would be this frame, because as you can see, there's no HUD on the gameplay whatsoever, and so yeah. Then I'm going to drag my clip out to the end of the clip, or I might have to trim it in, depends on how long the clip is. And then on the last visible frame, I'm going to drag this up until a time where i think is usually i like to look for when the victor royale is about to come up so that's about like right here and then you're gonna take that frame and then you're gonna go into your timeline and drag that keyframe to the very end now what you're gonna want to do is you want to go to the very beginning of the clip and keyframe that point now what i like to do is i usually like to start working backwards from the point where the kill happens to the beginning of the clip and so i'm gonna find a point where something significant happens in the clip so usually one of the things i like to do is like when the sniper pulls out or a shotgun or whatever clip you're editing I'm and i'm gonna keyframe that and then i'm gonna drag that point to whatever the closest beat is and this is right in the middle of two beats but since this is the sniper pulling out, there's not going to be any significant things happening after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it to the closest point to the kill, which would be right here. Now I'm going to continue to work backwards. And then the next significant thing that happens is this shockwave explodes. So I'm going to create a keyframe for that as well. And now I'm going to drag that to the close beat in the song. So I'm going to drag it to this point right here. By the way, you can hold shift when you're dragging for it to snap onto the closest point. And now, if we play this back, both the sniper pulling out and the shockwave explosion are timed up with beats. Obviously, it looks really weird because we haven't done any graphing yet, but you get the basis of what's going to happen now. Now, I have one more beat that I need to have uh, something on, and I'm going to look for the next thing, which appears to be these tires. So... On the frame where it jumps off the tires, which would be about right here, I'm going to do the same thing, just going to keyframe it, and then I'm going to drag it to the closest point. And you, even though it appears that it would be 
at this point at the very beginning, we already have the keyframe there, so I'm gonna drag it to the second point. Now we're done with most of our keyframing. The only thing is, if I play this back, this part is really slow and it's gonna result in a lot of frame drops at the beginning. So I'm gonna drag this first frame downwards so that it goes backwards in time. And I'm probably gonna put it about when this door opens so that now there is more time that has to be filled in between which will result in less frame drops. And now it's gonna look a lot better. It's gonna look like this. Also, since the door is opening, it's just gonna add a bit more spice to the clip. So yeah, pretty, pretty neat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these keyframes and I'm either going to press F9 on my keyboard or I'm going to right click. I'm just going to go to keyframe assistant and then easy ease. And then I'm going to press this graph right here. Now once I'm in the graph, I'm going to press this button right here so that I can see all my- Bro, I'm in speed graph. What am I doing? Alright, so if you're like me and you're in the speed graph like this, just right click anywhere that's not one of the values and press edit value graph so you can see a normal graph like this. And then you're going to want to press this button so you can see all the values more center screened. Then just click off anywhere so they're not all highlighted. And now we're going to be adding all the pizzazz to it. I'll usually highlight the first keyframe and drag the point up. And then I'll drag highlight the second one. And then I'll drag the, that point down. And this is what you want to look like. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to result in it being faster at the beginning. It's faster at the end but slower towards the middle because there's a less of an incline there compared to the steepness of the end of the beginning and you also want your two pegs on the keyframes to look like this so the first one should be going up the second one should be going down another problem i see a lot of people facing is they're way too extreme with it and they might have the first one all the way up here and the second one all the way down here you don't do that you never want this line to be curving downwards because then you just get the clip reversing like this it just looks so whack so what you're gonna want to, you just want it to be really simple like this. And so now I'm just gonna do that for pretty much all the points before the kill. So I'm just gonna drag this up as well, and I'll drag this down so it looks like this. I'll drag this up and this down. I'm just gonna do that for each one. All right, so we finished doing it to all the ones before the kill. But once you see these two keyframes that are right next to each other, that's when you'll know that this is the point where the kill happens. What you're gonna do want to do is you're just gonna leave this line, let it be. But for this last final line, when the Victor Royale is coming up, what you're going to do, what I personally usually like to do, is highlight the first keyframe and drag its point up, and then I'll get the second one, and I'm going to take its peg, and I'm going to hold shift so that it'll stay on a flat line as I'm moving it, and I'm just going to drag it over so it looks something like this. And usually this creates a bit more impact and you usually see the Victor Royale for a bit longer and it almost comes to the, a freeze frame as the clip ends like this. Another thing you could do is do like all the other clips. You could just drag this second point down so that it'll look like any of the other before keyframes. And then that's going to result in it speeding up at the end, which can sometimes lead to a pretty cool canvas, which can sometimes lead to a pretty cool transition. So it looks like this. As you can tell, it kind of speeds out at the end, like boom. And for the purpose of the, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna stick with the first one because that's personally what I usually like to use better. And now we'll play this back. This is what it looks like. Now, as you can see, everything that happens is synced up with a B in the song, and it looks really sick. But we still get all these trash frame drops. You know who else gets really trash frame drops? The noobs. So let's fix that. This is really complicated, so stick with me here. You might need to slow down the video. It depends, but... So you're gonna go to these four boxes right here. If you don't see them, that th means that this box, the very bottom is not checked. You're just gonna check that. It looks like three boxes back to back. And then you'll see these four boxes. You simply click the first one. You click it again. It should look like an arrow pointing out three dots. Let's see how this looks now. What do you know? We have no frame drops. Basically what's happening here is the computer is auto-generating frames wherever there's frame drops, <coughs> which sometimes leads to bugs. Like if you look at this frame, the pickaxe kind of looks a bit weird, but it's nothing really that noticeable. And an any editor watching the video is gonna know that it's just something that happens every time you edit. And anybody else probably won't even notice it because they're, they're just stupid morons that don't edit. Like imagine not editing. 
Bruh. All right, that's gonna conclude the full portions tutorial. I would highly recommend t checking out my impact tutorial. I'll leave a card to it in the top right. Basically, it teaches you how to have really cool impact and shake effects and stuff like that. And I'm gonna quickly apply some shakes onto this so it looks a lot better. Maybe even some sound effects. I don't know. We'll see. And then I'll time lapse it so y'all get a gist of what I'm doing. And then I'll show you the final result one last time. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it was really helpful. If it did, consider leaving a like and subscribing because that would really help out my channel. Also, you could check out some of my other edits if you want to see like more of my stuff. And so yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. I'm twerking in Minecraft and people are enjoying it. He's twerking on me. He's twerking on air. Hashtag stop rape, guys. Let's get that in the comments.